Hi, welcome back to the Git course here with Peter Gunardi. Today we're going to establish our first repository. So we should have our course material downloaded in the My Document. First of all, let's open up our Git Kraken software. Let's fire it up. Okay, so this is the user interface of my Git Kraken. Currently, it just shows everything's blank because we don't have any repositories created. So let me take some time to explain to you what all this uh, information means. The first one over here in the left, call it the left panel, it will show all the repository available in our local remote. And later on, if we have branch, it will show all the branch listed. And then up here, this is called the toolbar. It has different buttons. And in this course, we're going to go through all of these buttons in more detail later on. And then on the right here, we have something called the commit panel st state. This is a flow for a file to get into the backup. Later on, after we generate our repo, you'll be able to see what files that we need to work on and what file is in the mid transition. And then in here, this is our main view. We call it as a commit graph window. Over here later, when we have our repo, you will start seeing all the commit visually and then it will make it very easy for you to keep track on stuff. And then up here, it's pretty important, I use this a lot, is the search commit. When you work in the project, it's very normal that you will end up with hundreds of commits. And sometimes if you want to search a certain commits, you can just type in a keyword over here and then it will bring up all the commits for you. Let's click on this one here. We're going to work on our first commit, this button, and then we're going to click in the init. This init gives us an option to generate our first repo. For now, we're going to generate our local repo, right? In the, rep the path, just click on the browse, and then we're going to select this git kraken project. If you don't have this folder in here in your documents, there is a chance that there is something wrong when you do download the course material. You can go back to that uh, lessons in the first section and redo it again or post it into the forum below and I'll respond to it. Click on this one and then click in the select folder. It will automatically put the path to that folder in here. Now in here it says git ignore template optional. However, what I want you to do, just click on this one and then just select any. Because if you don't have a git ignore later on, there is a different process that you have to go through and then it's a pretty complex process. So for now, just click on something. It can be anything. We're going to change the data later. And then click in the create repository. Now it's working on our repository and then you will see this in the graph that you have a new repository. And then over here, by default, the first repository will always be master. We're going to go through that one later on throughout the lessons. And then if you see over here, we have all the unstaged file. It means all of this file hasn't been backed up yet. If, if you look at all this file, you're probably familiar. This is the course material that we download in the first section. This is the text file of the recipe. Right? And then... So this is the recipe to create a tiramisu, and then this is the image that we download from the course material, All right? So in the next lesson, we're going to work with, first of all, we're going to ignore some of the files because like, for example, for pictures, we don't necessarily need to keep a backup of the picture all the time. So in the next lesson, we're going to do the git ignore. We're going to uh, get into the detail of what's the git ignore. If you have any question at this point, please post it in the forum below and I'll respond to it as soon as possible. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next lesson.